This video is a brief look into the data logger function on Tune ECU. At the moment, I'm trying to figure out where the timing is on the bike and how to read that because the mods I'm going to make, I really need to keep an eye on the timing because that's going to be crucial. I'm not going to go into all the functions and everything you can read with the data logger. So this is just where I'm at with Tune ECU at the moment. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a bit of data logging with Tune ECU. Um, I've got me baffles in because I've been running the bike here at home. I don't like annoying the neighbours too much. And plus I'm going to be revving it a bit out in the street. I don't really want to draw attention to myself too much. So first of all, we're going to connect my cheap phone to the bike. Turn on tune ECU. The ECU. Oh, what's that thing? Get out. Connect. I've got a screen record thing on here as well, which I'm going to mess about with. Right, so it's now connected to our bike. So what we need to do is if we go over to our screen here, this is where we can pick all the sensors we want. So hit list. So at the moment I've got throttle position and engine speed and the ignition timing actually chose and what gear I'm in, so I know what the timing's doing for what gear. But you can pick all of these different sensors, battery voltage, air temp sensor voltage, coolant temp sensor voltage, manifold absolute pressure sensor voltage. You can only read the voltages of these, some of these things and not the actual measurements of a lot of them, so you can't actually measure the air fuel ratio or anything like this because it's only got narrow band oxygen sensors in and that's not something which is supported to be able to read. So as you can see I've got throttle position, engine speed, ignition time and a gear position because this is what I've been trying to log, what the timing's doing and, and when it's doing it. So yeah basically you pick your sensors and then when you hit record you've got to hold your finger on it or thumb on it for a little while it actually starts recording what's going on so if we start the bike now see all these things are going to change now stop recording and to be able to actually read the data log you need to actually disconnect from the bike so hit ECU disconnect and then little data log will appear there so if I hit that open and there's the last one it's saved it saved it to the Tune ECU folder on your device so it'll be that one, open that and that will tell you what is going on at certain revs because of and throttle position and stuff like that but what I do is I actually email this log to myself then I can open it up on my tablet because this phone is <laughs> it's way too small to actually be able to see what's going on so we'll do that now I'll email that map to myself so if I go into email, and then it's stored in a Tune ECU folder, so you find the folder, attach it to your email, and email it to yourself. That's what I do. The useful thing about data logging is you can actually, say for instance you've got a fault on your bike, and you can ride it, and when it does a fault, it's going to record that data of when it's doing it. So it's probably a good idea, if you've got something like that, to figure out some sort of time frame of when it's doing it, because this records the data in seconds so that you need to find a way of finding your way on the map whereabouts your fault occurred or whatever so I'm gonna ride it in first gear now I'm gonna try and open it up and get full throttle to see what the timings doing under full throttle conditions the engines warm already so I've got my baffles in so hopefully I won't upset neighbors too much oh I need to hit record so hard to see. I, I chose the hottest part of the day to do this. I can't that's not recording. Right, it's recording now. So that's part throttle. That's a bit more throttle. Let's give it more throttle. More throttle. This is full throttle. Do that again. Okay. 
So that's hopefully my first gear data logged, or some of it. I don't think I really got to full revs, because I would have been speeding, and that's wrong. So we'll turn that off. And that will save that in the ECU tune folder on the phone. But right now we're going to find somewhere quieter so I can go a bit faster. So let's turn me record on and let's do this again. First gear, I'm going to hit a rev limiter. Okay, so I've emailed that log to myself and now that will be in files under internal storage tune ECU logs and this is where all the where I've saved the log which I emailed to myself and I named it timing so I know which one it is so now if I go to tune ECU hit data log and open it's already at that directory with the logs in it, hit timing, that will bring up the data log for what I've done. So as you can see it's much easier to see on the tablet rather than the, the phone and I can, I can zoom in on that as well. So this is all seconds along the bottom so it's actually measured in seconds so the green line is my throttle position, the blue line is the RPM and the pink line is ignition timing and here you've got what gear I'm in as well so as you can see here I think this was in neutral I went up to full throttle and the engine revs went to actually there's a little thing here you can move that little cursor and get it where you want and you can see exact so that was 6000 rpm roughly and the ignition timing was 39 degrees and I was in neutral so if I come along here to when I was in this is my first gear test so as you can see at full throttle about 6.8 the ignition timing was 33 degrees the ignition timing actually go, goes up when you let off the throttle and you're on overrun so it went, that went right up to like 60 degrees there but actually when you're under load it's never gone above 33 degrees and you can see what gear I'm in here too as you can see I only really checked first and second gear first gear has its own ignition map, second gear has its own ignition map and third to six have another ignition map so I need to do my mapping for third to six gear but I need to find a really nice piece of road to do that because I'll be going pretty fast if I'm revving it out in third gear so that's that. That's how you use. The, that's how you use that. I have actually got another log on here. I actually recorded it while I rode to work. It took me about half an hour just to see if I could email a file that big. So this is a pretty big log, and I I did. I managed to email that file to myself, and it was half an hour long. And I've got the whole log for it. I haven't actually tried doing anything longer than that, but I really don't think I'm going to need to. So as I said before, if you've got a fault on the bike or the bike does something and you want to know what's going on when it does that, you need to figure out some way of plotting that on the map where it does it. So what I've figured out is there's actually a... Um, I'll tell you what I haven't figured out. I haven't figured out how to get back to Tune ECU from this data log page. I have to just keep closing everything and going into it again. But what I've worked out is if I go to the sensors list and activate clutch switch, that will give me should give me a reading of when I'm pulling the clutch in. So what I'm going to do is see what happens. Like for instance, if I got a fault, like a misfire or something on the bike, and it misfires, and I want to know when it does that. What I can do is after it's misfired, I can bring, I can operate the clutch three times, and I should hopefully see that on my data log somewhere. 
and then I'll know that's just after the faults occurred. So I'm going to give that a go. Right, I'm just going to put my clutch sensor theory into practice. I've got a data logger on and I've got my clutch position and ignition timing and stuff selected. I've hit record, so I'm recording and data logging at the moment. We'll ride it and then I'll try to clutch thing, see what happens. As it happens, it doesn't actually log the clutch switch. I tried to start a switch as well. It doesn't do that either. So what I'm going to have to do is pop it in neutral and like rev it three times or something to know where I am on the map. Or I can have a stopwatch and actually keep an eye on the, what time it does it. So this is all a learning curve and hopefully this is helpful for you too. Have a great day.